So this is a great uh, blueberry experiment of 2017. Uh, the way this works is uh, blueberries don't grow in Utah. The soil is too uh, alkaline. Uh, soil in Utah has a pH of roughly 7 or 8 and blueberries grow in a pH of 4. So they don't grow in Utah because our soil will kill them. But these were at Home Depot and I thought well, why are you selling them then? <laughs> so I bought some. And then I came home and realized uh, this is going to be complicated. Uh, so I thought I'd bring you guys along. Uh, the way this works is uh, in order to grow them, you have to grow them in a container. Uh, you don't have to. I mean, you could grow them in like a raised garden bed. But I'm going to grow them in a container because, let's face it, that's... Uh, that's uh, the easiest way to control uh, the pH. So um, the first thing that you'll notice uh, here in front, pardon me, I gotta make an adjustment here, peat moss, uh, sphagnum peat moss. Um, if you make half of your pot this uh, peat moss, uh, you will uh, see a change in pH. Uh, the other half that you see in my pots is just uh, mulch I got from the dumps. Uh, I measured it using a pH meter and it's coming in around 7. Uh, but you're supposed to take the soil from your garden and mix it half and half with sphagnum um, and see if you can get it to, uh, to, to grow. So the pots you see in front of you uh, are 50-50 mix, uh, peat moss and uh, mulch from the dump. And uh, when I measure them, they come in a little bit high. They're still around five, which is a, an acceptable level for the for the berries. Uh, to get it to go lower, I'm going to use this uh, azalea fertilizer. Right. So this is meant for uh, acid-loving plants. And I can even read that. There we go, acid loving plants. So the idea is that azaleas and rhododendrons and, and uh, other plants that, that grow in an acid soil use a special fertilizer. You also water them with uh, a, a slight uh, acid mix of uh, vinegar. Um, and so these pots will have a special, a special mix to uh, to make them work and I know you're asking uh, well geez why would you do that uh, by the time you're done these blueberries will cost two hundred dollars each uh, but I think this is sustainable I think that once once you get them in their pots and you've given them their fertilizer I think after that uh, uh, if you if you put some pine bark on top and, and watered through the pine bark you could give them a continuous feed of uh, and you'll need uh, You'll need uh, rhododendron um, fertilizer, etc. Uh, so this is an experiment, uh, an expensive experiment. Uh, Forty dollars for the plants, another twenty dollars for the pots, and, and uh, some peat moss, which I think was twelve dollars for the bag. So not outrageous, but uh, considering that you can buy blueberries for two dollars for a little carton, um, this is pretty spendy. So that's the experiment. I'm going to set all this up uh, off camera and uh, I'll check in with you guys about it at a later time. But uh, it's a great blueberry grow off of 2017. Uh, you're supposed to pinch off the flowers the first year so that the roots get, get plenty of, uh, of uh, time to grow. So there, there isn't a harvest in the first year uh, of blueberries. But uh, I'm playing the long game. So the question is, at the end of the season, are they still alive? Do they still look as green as they look right now? And uh, I'm anxious to see, see what happens. Because uh, I, I think I can keep them alive for at least a year, maybe two or three. And, and if so, then the blueberries will be coming out of my ears. Anyway, super exciting, right? Uh, I, hope, I hope this works. Otherwise, I just wasted a lot of money. I'll see you on the next video.